There are several challenges for implementing large-scale radiology data collection, but I'd like to highlight three. Number one, non-uniformity in reports and in language, both between radiologists at a certain point in time, but also th across time. So for example, in our retrospective study where we looked at free text radiology reports over the past 28 years, we saw that um, over the, the course of that time, first of all, technology is gonna change. The language radiologists used to describe a finding is going to change, for example, based on societal guidelines. Um, and those guidelines themselves may change. So having templated based dictations that are very easy to adopt and implement in clinical practice uh, will really help with uh, performing large scale radiology data collection. Another challenge I'd like to highlight is the non-uniformity in healthcare systems and how data is stored. For example, many systems use uh, exam codes, and these are built for billing and not necessarily for research. So every healthcare system is going to have a different uh, set of exam codes, and that doesn't correlate necessarily with anatomy or pathology. And so you need a radiologist or someone very highly trained who's going to know which exam codes color the, cover the right anatomy um, and are performed in the technique that you want uh, to be able to uh, generate the cohort uh, with a disease process that you're interested in. And then lastly, non-uniformity um, in disease processes. You know, it's very simple to ask a very simple question and easier to extract data. For example, what is the size of a cyst? But when you have infiltrative processes or a constellation of findings that um, compose a disease process, that becomes harder to look for um, because you're trying to collect various different pieces of information and that is harder. Collecting data improves quality in a radiology department in a number of ways, but I'd like to highlight two with my time here today. Um, number one, uh, by helping us gather and evaluate very large data sets and sample sizes at a single point in time, but also across time, we're better able to understand disease processes, how they manifest on imaging, and also their natural history, which can then inform patient guidelines and management. Uh, this is incredibly important because as more and more people are imaged, uh, we're f there are imaging findings, of course, and then how do we manage those and what sort of, you know, is this a benign process or is this something that we need to watch more closely? Might it grow? Could it become a cancer? So by being able to create these robust and large data sets at a single point in time, but also across time, we're better able to um, give appropriate recommendations on what to be done with these findings um, to help better direct patient care. And then number two, um, something I'm incredibly impassioned about is um, radiology pathology uh, feedback. Uh, by having a software algorithm that can correlate pathology uh, results with radiology reports, we can get radiologists regular systematized feedback on all of their patients. Um, this is in contrast to the current standard, which is very haphazard. It relies on radiologists to uh, follow up on a case um, on their free time, because this is not time that they're compensated for, uh, to follow up on a case that they've thought is interesting and have had time to save. Um, and then uh, through some sort of automated software, instead they can get regular follow-up on every single case. So they maybe, it doesn't even rely on them having time to save the case. It doesn't even rely on them necessarily needing to note mentally that it might have been interesting. And it doesn't rely on perhaps um, a random primary care doctor reaching out and giving them feedback. Instead, they can find out which patients went on to have a pathologic diagnosis or a final diagnosis and let them know, you know, this constellation of findings was this disease process. And that can help us, again, as um, technology evolves, um, as, you know, we treat a broad range of patients, helping us better understand how these various diseases that we're diagnosing manifest in um, patients. An example of a grill world project that we completed successfully is our project using natural language processing and a question and answering algorithm to evaluate the natural history of pancreatic cystic lesions. We evaluated free text over the past 
uh, free text radiology reports over the past 28 years, and we were able to look and get more evidence on what actually happens with these pancreatic cystic lesions to help better inform management guidelines. Lastly, one thing I'd like to emphasize is the importance of diverse teams um, of data engineers, uh, clinicians, and clinician scientists. Everyone brings a different background and a different understanding of what's going on on the patient side, the care side, um, as well as the data side. So having these robust teams is very important for generating the best quality studies with the best quality results possible.